Okay, here we have section 4.3. This is the last section for week two. Um, and this one is now going to introduce what are called logarithmic functions. Okay, now logarithmic functions and exponentials are inverses of each other. So if you were to swap the things around, that's what creates a, um, normally we have y equal a to the x. And if I swap the variables, I get x equals a to the y, which means this expression is the inverse of that expression, okay? These are called exponentials. When they're written like this, um, you can still write it. This expression can still be written so that y is the dependent variable. So this can still be written as y equals. Now, in order for you to write it like that, that's where the logarithmic um, notation comes in, okay? So yes, I can solve for y, but now it has this weird notation, log a to the power x, okay? And all that means is that a is the base, x is the value that you get when you raise a to this exponent, okay? So you need to understand that a logarithmic expression is equivalent to an exponent, okay? Always, always remember that. A logarithmic equation is equal to an exponent. This thing here, down here, it's called the subscript. So here's your regular print, and then you're, you have a subscript where it's down below the subscript. That's the super, that's a subscript. The superscript is like an exponent. When you put the exponent up top real small, now you're gonna be putting these guys at the bottom real small. So they're kind of, I mean, even visually, they look like the inverse the opposite of a um, exponent, right? So I just want you to be careful because I noticed that when we get to this section, a lot of people will do this, and that's wrong, okay? You cannot put the base on the same level as everything else in that expression, okay? You have to write log as regular printed log, and then it has to have a tiny subscript of A, and then X is normal as well. This is not a to the power x, so don't try to write it like that. It's not, the a is what should be tiny, not the x, okay? So it's very important that you learn this because on the test, as you already know, when you took test one, and possibly you've taken test two already, um, notation is going to give you points or it's gonna take away points. So I would hate for people to one, get their problems confused because they don't have the notation correctly, and then two, lose points on the test because they don't have their notation correctly. So make sure when you're writing logarithmic expressions that you write the bases as subscripts. Just the same like you do when you would write exponents. You never told me x squared was this, right? You knew that it was x with a little tiny two up top. It's the same thing with the logarithm and the bases for the logarithms, okay? So this is called a base. This thing here, what you're taking the log of, is called an argument. I have no idea why it's called that, but that's what they call it, okay? So that's what I'm taking the logarithmic of, is that argument, okay? And when I'm done, um, I'll be given a value. So what they want us to do is they want us to switch the forms over. They want us to switch from logarithmic form to exponential form. And the easiest way that I can explain that is that the base will stay the base. Notice that the base here is A, and the base here of the exponential is also A. But the variable that's on the same side as A changes. So notice that the X variable was over here, the argument, right, was over here, and now the argument is on the other side and the y is over here with the um, base. So if you have an exponential form, identify what your base is. This is my base. So I am gonna have log and then that base subscript three. But then I need to figure out what I'm taking the log on of and what it's gonna equal. 
And so there's two ways to think about it. Before, the four was attached to the three, so that automatically means the four needs to go on the other side and the 81 needs to go here. Another way to think about it is that, remember I told you that logarithms should equal the exponent. So immediately you know that the exponent of four should go here, leaving no place else for the 81 to go, but inside the log, okay? Now here, this one's different. So my base is one half, so I am gonna write my base of one half. And then remember, a logarithm is equal to an exponent. So my exponent should be the negative three, and then I have no place else for the eight to go but on the other side. Or you can think of it as base is the base, and instead of the eight being on the same side as the one half, now the negative three has to be on the same side as the one half. Um, here, base is 10, so log with the tiny base 10, and then the three and the 10,000 switch, or what is that, 1,000, and should equal the exponent. Here, the base is five, so I'm gonna write five. This should be the exponent, negative three, and so that should equal one over 125. Here, I have log. My base here is 12. Um, the exponent is one, and so I have no place else but for the 12 to go here. Now, normally when it's just you're taking the log of one number, you notice that they don't use parentheses when it's just one number. But eventually you'll get to problems where you're not taking the log of just one single thing. And so that's why I just start getting into the habit of using parentheses so that we can identify that later. Um, here my base is six, and then these guys are gonna swap. So now it's gonna be zero exponent and one. So that's the way you can think about how to convert them over. Now, they want us to solve some algorithmic or some logarithmic expressions. So notice that it says log base x. I cannot solve this expression when x is inside the log there, the base. But what I can do is I can convert it into its equivalent form. So x is the base and this is the exponent, and then that would equi be equivalent to 16 over nine. And now that x is no longer the little base of the log, it just looks like this, I can solve this. What does that mean, negative two exponent? It means x over x squared, or one over x squared with a positive exponent. And then I can cross multiply, so one times nine is nine, 16 times x squared is 16x squared. I can divide by 16. I'm gonna come over here because I have more space over here. I get nine over 16 equal to x squared. And then I can take the square root of both sides. But remember, when you take the square root of both sides, you get plus or minus. And then I have the square root of nine over the square root of 16. So I get plus or minus three over four which means I have two possible answers, three over four and negative three over four. And just like the exponentials, when I told you when you had this, that the base had to be positive, it's the same for the logarithms. The base has to be positive, which means that negative four, negative three fourths is not going to be an answer. I can only have a positive base. So three fourths positive is gonna be the only solution here. Now, if I go on to the next problem, now I have X in the argument. Again, I cannot solve the X. If X is anywhere in the log, you can't solve it, okay? So you have to convert it over to the exponential form. So this is 16 base. This should be the exponent because a log is equal to the exponent. And then the X would go on the other side. And then now all I have to do is type that expression in my calculator and I'm done. Three over four. Calculator is not cooperating with me right now. There we go. And I get eight. Okay. Same thing here. Oh, this one. This one would be okay. And I could solve this but we don't learn this technique on how to figure this out the way it is until we get to 4.4. 4. 
But for now, we can still figure out the problem without the knowledge from 4.4 by switching the form. So 36 is the base, and then I have the power x equal to the square root of 6. Now, remember that a square root can be written as 6 to the power 1 half. And then 6 is the smaller base, so I have to write this one as 6 squared. And then you multiply your exponents. And so then if the bases are the same, the only way the expressions can be the same is if the exponents are the same. And then divide by 2. So I get x equals, and let's see what we get here. 1 over 2, go to the side, and hit divided by 2. This is 1 fourth. And be sure to do that in your calculator because I don't know how many times I have people canceling this thing or doing weird stuff and they don't get 1 fourth. Okay, so, and that is perfectly fine because x was not in the base and it was not the, well, it is the exponent, but exponents can be positive or negative. It's only the bases that have to be positive or the arguments have to be positive. And x variable was not in the base and it was not in the argument. So whatever I get, it's, it's good. Now here, we're going to switch it. So when I switch it over, 1 fifth is the base, and then 3 is the exponent, and the x plus 5 goes on the other side. What is 1 fifth raised to the third? That's 1 over 125. And if I solve for x, I have to minus 5 on both sides. So 1 over 125 minus 5 my calculator tells me is 620, negative 624 over 125. Now, can that be a solution? Let's see. What happens if I plug this number into the argument? If I take negative 624 over 125 and I add 5 to it, I do get a positive argument. So when I plug this value in for x, the argument does end up being positive. So this is a good answer. I got scared because it was negative. But when you plug it in, it doesn't make it a negative. So it's good. Here, if we switch the forms over, my base is now this expression, x plus 4. The exponent is 1, and the 12 is on the other side. And if you have something raised to the 1, it's just the base itself. And so if I minus 4 on both sides, I get x equal to 8. Now if I plug 8 back into the base, it would be 8 plus 4, which is positive 12. And as long as I have a positive base and a positive argument, that is the solution. So the answer here is 8. Um, now we have logarithmic functions, right? So we know about logarithmic expressions. We know about logarithmic equations. We also have logarithmic functions. And so I want you to remember the exponential points. Because this, I don't ever memorize any of the log stuff. Only because I know all I have to do is take the exponential junk, which I'm familiar with. I'm familiar with exponents, right? Log is the brand new concept. Um, I know that when I plug in 1 for the exponent, I'm just going to get the base. I know that when I plug in 0 for the exponent, I'm just going to get 1. And when I plug negative 1 in for the exponent, I'm going to get the reciprocal of the base. I know this. Okay. All you have to do is remember that exponentials and logs are inverses of one another. And what does that mean? It means you swap out the x and y's. So if I want y equal to log a of x, all I'm going to do is swap those points. So now I have a and 1, 1 and 0, and 1 over a and negative 1. And if you look over here at these points, I have exactly that. 1 over a, negative 1, 1 and 0, and a and 1. Okay. Um, so that's really all I do is I, I keep this old information and then I just convert it over. And so then I don't have to memorize the points for both. I already know them. I can derive them. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and try a problem. 
So now we have log 5x. So I always do my little table. Um, 1, a, 0, 1, negative 1, 1 over a. And so for us, we're going to have, because this is the exponential. For the log, we should have a, 1, 1, 0, and 1 over a, negative 1. So what is a? In this case, my base is 5. So what are my points going to look like for this problem? The base itself, 5. 1 and 0 is still 1 and 0. And then the reciprocal of 5, which is 1 over 5. And these are the points that I'm going to use. Okay? So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 1 in the x value. Then we're going to go 1 and 0. And then we're going to go negative 1 fifth, which is really close to 0, and negative 1. So down here. And so then it's going to have this... Um, behavior here. Now just like exponentials had a asymptote on the x-axis, you remember you're swapping the variables, right? So now logs have an asymptote on the y-axis. Okay? So you don't ever cross over this way. There will never ever ever be a y-intercept on this problem. Okay? Now I'm going to stop the video here and we'll get into the properties of logs in the next part.